so I don't know if that's back. Um, seems to be now connecting okay, so we shall see. Hopefully I haven't lost the first half of that. We shall see. If I have, just to recap, so we are we've got our cutscene working up to the point of playing a sound effect here. So, so we're playing, uh, we've finished playing our footsteps on metal doors, metal floor, and we're now going to try and get this narration playing, this text. So uh, I've created this play narration function, which is going to load up the file, and then it is going to push it through the narrator uh, object. But I'm having a little bit of a problem getting access to the narrator. Um, I would have thought it would just be, uh, you know what? Is it? Maybe it's this. What do you think, folks? Is that what I need to do? I'm gonna sneeze. It's coming. It's coming live on stream. Oh my god. Oh, that's gone. Right, okay, here we go. Oh, full screen, please. Nice try. It's nearly time, Jove. He's waiting. Yeah. Nice. Beautiful. All right, so now, um, what are we going to show on screen? Uh, we've got to show that picture of Jupiter, right? I think that's uh, one of the things we want to do. So... Um, we also wanted to pause before the picture came up. Um, so let's see. We want to we want to fade in. Uh, fade in an image. Uh, fade in image. Here we go. Delete me. Dot jpeg. That's the one we want. Now, what would really be good if we ha if we could schedule some kind of uh, length to this, because we need to pace. It's a cutscene. We want to have control over the pace, and because we've used the animation player, we have no control over the pace or the speed of the animation. I think I could be wrong. Maybe we can pass something into the animation player. Uh, let's have a quick check. Godot speed of animation. Uh, GD script. Ah, oh, playback speed. Oh, nice. Look at that. Um, set speed scale. So that's for an animation player. Uh, okay, so if we use this, if we change our fade in image function, um, let's have a look. Where is that? That's our cutscenes, that's our effects. Right, fade in image. So there's the animation player. So what we want to do is just before we play that, is we set speed of the animation. That's so cool. If it works. Speed. And then pass in speed. And I think it, we, we're de defaulting to one, right? I think that's what I read, right? Speed scale, the speed scaling ratio. For instance, if this value is one, the animation plays at normal speed. If it's 0 0.5, then it plays at half speed. If it's two, then it plays at double speed. Right, cool. Okay, so I've got to remember that. Uh, pass in touch to fade in and speed uh, where 0 0.5 is half, one is normal, and two is double. I'm going to put those in. It's floats, just so I remember. They are floating points. And that should be 1.0. All right. Cool. Oh my god. So now I can fade that image in nice and smoothly. Um, I can't remember whether it's the images appear above the white. Whoops. What am I doing? Okay. So, soon find out. So, hopefully, set speed scale is going to work there. And we're going to put in. 
Just try it not. We'll just try it without without at the moment. And we don't want any yield. It's gonna have that fade in whilst the footsteps are coming in. Here we go. Yep. Too fast though. And we've got titles still. So it's nearly time, Jove. He's waiting. And of course we need background noise as well. <clears throat> so we we're gonna need some sort of, sort of uh, play background noise here. So we've, we've got those awesome sounds of Jupiter. Um, so let's try and scale back our fade in so it's like 0 0.5. Let's just try it even slower. Let's go over 0 0.1. Does it look a bit jittery? Or is it perfect? Yeah, it's pretty perfect. Okay, so we need, again, we need to pace, it's right? Time, Jove. So what we want to really do is we want to play the background sound, right? We fade it in. Um, and then we want to, we want to pause. And then we want to fade the title out, right? We want to fade out the title. That's great. We can add, actually add speeds to the titles now as well. Um, control the speed of the animation. Um, let's just see if that works. So that should fade out the title, although it's not quite what I want yet. Should at least fade the title out. Oh, nope. I think got this wrong canvas layer. Expected two arguments, fade out title. Oh, it's got a second parameter. What is that? Uh... Oh, yeah, you have to specify what color you're fading out. Otherwise the text blinks. Um, so fade out title. Say it. But the two arguments. Why would it need the text? It doesn't need the text, it just needs the color. There we go. Let's try again. Okay. Uh, what happened there? We've got a yield that never finishes. Finished title fade. Looks like our yield isn't finishing and therefore it never continues. Uh, let's have a look. Fade out title. Uh, on title player. Okay, we'll just do uh, print out here. I should like create like a universal debugger here. So we can decide whether we want to show these or not. I mean, I know these work, so it's like, you know what, you know what. Right, play again. We want to see the titles fading out. So that's the title fade in. What? Okay, so only one triggered. Triggers. Oh. Why is it different now? Only time, Jove. Wait. Waiting. One more time. What's going on there? Hmm. Fade out title. Play backwards. Wait. I don't have a fade out black, right? I'm playing backwards. The same ones. So it's an animation that doesn't exist. So now it's just going to pop up and then disappear straight away, right? Yeah, 
So now we need the port. It's nearly time, Jove. He's waiting. All right. Okay. So let's create a uh, a yield timer. How do we do that? Oh, we've got a timer here. Um. I have seen this yield timer. Cool. I need to create a timer, do I? I've got one. Well, we can use this. Uh, don't, we don't need to link to that time. I don't know what we're using that for. Something somewhere. Right, okay, so... Time in seconds. Let's go for four seconds. Hmm? So this is a pause. Now, bear in mind, we should have some sound here. Some atmospherics. One, two, three, four, fade out. Cool. Okay, so while we're waiting on that pause, then we're gonna have the we're gonna have the sound of Jupiter, this beautiful noise uh, from NASA, fade in. So um, don't want to get my knickers in a twist because we've got a lot of. Uh, oh my God, I was using that term the other day and it totally. Got it completely wrong. Nick's in a twist means you're flying into a rage. I'm using it like getting muddled up. So um, anyway, I don't want to. Uh, I, I'm already in the middle of setting up subtitles for this, so I just don't want to lose my space, uh, my, my step here. Um, so I think I want to get the narration in first, and then we'll work on the other areas. So play background sound here. So actually, it would be better. I like that sort of clean. Um, yeah, as, as soon as the title is faded in, we start the background noise fading in. So we get four seconds, and it's really coming in while Jupiter starts fading in the background. Uh, okay, so. We don't even need to wait for this. We don't need to yield for the fading image. Okay, let's have a look at the narration player. So this is the important stuff, right? We want to get uh, the text on the screen here. So we want to clean out any existing subtitles, update the subtitle, fade in the subtitle, and then play the sound. Uh, we're already playing the sound here. That's cool. Get rid of that. We're not returning. We are returning the length of the audio, but we're not doing anything with it yet. Um, so we want to, oh, that's interesting. So actually what I was doing is I was yielding inside the function. So I didn't need to wait for, oh, I'm a raptor doing what I can. Going to eat everything to the appearance of man. Yo, yo, see, see me, I'm living beneath the soil. I'll be back when I'm coming as oil. Nice. Thank you, whiskey trials. <laughs> uh, is that... <laughs> Have you been watching the the disaster that is my internet connection live streaming tonight? Thanks for joining me, man. Um, so let us clear out these subtitles first. We'll work on the next problem, one problem at a time. So we are hooking in to the user interface. So do we do that anywhere? Uh, well, it's the cutscene, right? So we're already in the user interface. So scenes, cutscene. Here we are. We've already got access to all this. So what we should probably do, rather than like connecting to them all manually down here, we should set up on ready functions and just hook these guys all up. So we'll call this titles. And we'll call this narrating, narration. 
it, it will call it subtitles. And uh, yeah, that's what we need, right? And then here we have to do. It's going to be. It's going to be. You know why this is a much better way of doing it? Because look down here. If I change my, if I change my layout of my nodes later on, or change the names, this is all going to mess up. Whereas here, if I do it here, I only need to do it in one place. So I've already messed up by doing it like this. Um, anyway, right. So titles is going to be control forward slash. Um, screen, you know what, the easy way to do this is just do dollar, and you can just type it in, and it'll tell you what the, should, as long as I've got an error here, got the error, right, dollar, titles, oh, it's not happy, what about here, dollar, control, there we go, Slash screen box area titles. Right, so I can copy that, right? Just do that in here. Get rid of the dollar. And there we go. That's my link to titles. And subtitles is very similar. It's container four and it's narration. Super. Now I'm going to update my titles here to use this instead. Uh, fade an image, fade an image, blah, blah, blah. Fade in title. So I can get rid of all that. I'll just put titles.txt. Get rid of all that. And titles.color. Don't need it here at all. Uh, clear out all those errors. Right, now we're going to do subtitles. So, clear out any existing subtitles. So, subtitles.txt equals nothing. Easy. Update the subtitles. So, subtitles. Uh, we, we actually didn't need to do that clearing out, right? Because it makes no difference. Um, so, subtitles.txt equals and then whatever we pass in so text what about the name We're using the character name as well worry about that in a minute okay now we need to fade it in so uh, we need a new animation player so let's create a new animation player in our, uh, we note animation player this is going to be the controller for our subtitle animation player and so do we how do we do this normally we're not linking to them uh, oh look we've already set up a signal as well finish narration fade uh, we're way ahead of ourselves here so that would be this create uh, animation finished in here subtitle animation finished connect there we go so there's our a little function for uh, our subtitles. Is it narration finished? Yep. Oh. Did I just delete it? Or was I just going. Yeah, finished narration fade. That's the one. There we go. All right. Um, so now we've just got to actually fade it out. So we've done this a million times already, right? We can do this again, quick and easy. So we open up our animation player, create a new animation, we shall call it fade in. We shall use it forwards and backwards. Uh, yeah, I know, I know. I did actually do it previously on the stream before you managed to reconnect. Thank you very much, Whiskey Trails. Um, yeah. But I don't know what I don't know what will happen if it works. Probably you know better that that didn't work. You're a bit of rewind and fast forward right now. 
don't have the liberty. If you could check for me, that'd be great. <laughs> and then I'll do it previously on the stream uh, that I started back again 20 minutes ago. God. Pain in the ass. That's never happened before, but, you know, dodgy internet. So we want to fade in the subtitle. So we need a link to our subtitle animation player. We're going to play our fade in animation. Super. Uh, and then we're going to create our fade in animation. How easy is this? Super easy. So we're going to open up our cutscene. Here it is, cutscene. You can't see anything until we hide, uh, un unveil it. We'll put some text in our narration box just so we can see that. Here is some text. Oops. Click away. Oh, you can't see it. Okay. Oh, it's set to not visible. So actually, let's leave it. We don't need to see it. All we're going to do is just make it uh, visible, right? So we're going to our visibility, modulate. Our alpha level is zero. So we're going to set that as a key here. Okay, create new track for property modulate, setting a key. We're going to go to one second later and we are going to change it to visible and then add another key. And that's it done so we go back to our script oh thanks mate yes yeah, it's, it's coming on it's, well maybe Steph raised concerns as to whether it would be fun or not the other day so oh look at that oh of course control off there we go I'll show you oh it's gonna give you a quick preview but you're gone um so, okay. So in our script now, we've got a fade in. Uh, that should be it. it. Should just work, right? So let's try it out. Might not look great, and also the text might not be the right color. Text. Type stop text. Okay. My link's wrong. It needs to be like that. Me too. Um, clearly this isn't working. I must have done this somewhere else. Let's have a look at our other scripts and see. Yeah, cutscene. That's what we're doing. Exit. Yeah. Location. Yeah. So, get node. Balcony. Exit. Living area. Um, green script. Yeah. So there's no forward slash. So. I'll give you a quick uh, demo. Whiskey trials. Here we go. I haven't got any audio in yet. Uh, I'll turn on the audio. We'll just uh, see global. No narration. True. And hit play. I woke up. My mouth was dry. I think I left the heating on. Now, obviously, that's all going to change. Uh, we've got a nice script in development at the moment. But uh, I think, uh, wait a minute, you've seen all this already, haven't you? Let screen on. Now we can leave the location. I entered the elevator. Now we've got buttons. I don't know if you saw that before. So we've got buttons that you press to change your location. 
now, the TV should still be playing. Yeah. So if you've got a very long TV channel, then you don't have to listen to the same thing over and over again. It just keeps on going. And uh, if you fancy it, by the way, we have uh, Steph has set up a script. Uh, let me bring this up. This would be great. I don't know if, if you've talked to Steph about what um, character you're going to play yet, but we've got uh, the news anchor. Uh, here we go. News anchor. Good evening. Welcome to the 10 o'clock news. We could have like some proper Scottish news anchor doing the local news from Europa. <laughs> but look at all this. There's loads. Oh, yeah. And you've got Nick Ryder. Nick Ryder. Hello, this is Nick Ryder from Seattle, Sydney. Protesters, protests have taken to the streets. Why is it uh, being flagged by Grammarly? They are hungry. Many are unemployed, and they are angry. Harry Clements. <laughs> I mean, we need like another like ten pages. I want the news to just go on and on and on. But what's beautiful about it is that when you engage with something like the news, then it starts setting the narrative. It starts talking a little bit about what the world is. So if you engage with something like that, you learn a little bit more about the universe you're in. Uh, it's not necessary, but uh, so, and everything she's done in regards to the interaction with the objects, uh, the, the objects that are in the room, just everything builds the story. It's really well done. So can't wait to see it all come together. I just need to get all the tools in place so that she can bash on with it. Um, right, so I'm trying to get a link to our Okay, well that's the problem. So So we're getting the tree. So we're actually getting um, getting the wrong box here. So we're getting the tree, which means we're getting the the root node. Um, current scene. I think we just used to use get node. That should work better because it's just we're just getting something relative to uh where the script is and the script is all cut here my mouth was dry can we get titles yay okay. yeah. whoops whoops clicked Let's try that again i woke up my mouth was dry i think i left the heating on and this is why i turned off the narration so i did listen to myself over and over again Chapter one, a goodbye. Q fade out of text now. Q image fade in. Q narration at the bottom. Is it going to work? It's nearly time, Jove. Text. Ah, oh, yes. Right, brilliant. So, uh, that's bloody awesome. Of course, if it's a, it's a large cut screen, um, then a cut scene, then you're going to want to forward wind as you develop. Uh, so I need some quick way of just skipping past the intro and working on the point that I'm at. So text, well, that's not very good. We don't want text to appear. We want to actually show our, our cut scene. So let's go back into our scripts, go into the game script and cut scene tutorial. Here we go. Right. So I'm just writing text to the screen at the moment. Let's get the text from the tutorial. Here it is. So it's nearly time, Jove. It's waiting. Boom. That's what Myra says. We're also going to have to have the name of the character. So I'm thinking maybe um, like in bold above the text at the moment. Just something simple. Um, at this point, I don't want big faces popping in over here. And uh, I'm not trying to recreate the cutesy 
dialogue system that we've got in game. I'm trying to create something outside of that, which is the cutscene system. Right. So if we're playing narration, we've got to just automatically start the fade out of the text once it's played, right? So at the moment, our when we look at what our old um where is it? Our old function here, play narration. So we've taken this from another another game. And the purpose of this was that it was a standalone function that would return audio length and then it would do the fade out once the audio length had finished, once the audio had finished. So actually we could do a yield in here, right? And wait for our actual um audio to finish playing based on the audio length. So can you do something like, uh, we've got a yield to a timer that's based on the audio length here. And you know what, I'm gonna check how I did it in here. So we're looking for a yield, delaying for talk time, there you go. Maybe a lot of timers popping up in our, in our tree. talk time is now audio length. So at this point, this script is just gonna stop until the audio is finished playing. So the text is faded in and then it waits. Um, <clears throat> so when the text finishes, now we just need to play, we fade out. We don't need any signals. We can just play this backwards. Uh, and it's fade in backwards, right? We don't need to return audio length anymore. That should be it. That should be our narration function. Let's try it out. I woke up. My mouth was dry. I think I left the heating on. What we're also looking for is like a, a finished narration signal to pop up down here. It's nearly time, Jove. He's waiting. A little bit of a flicker there. I think that's because um, the state was incorrect for the animation player. We need to reset the state of our um, of that element. So when we've got this hide all elements here, uh, we can see we're setting narration to transparent. So what we could also do with is setting narration element text to nothing perhaps I'm not sure what caused that flicker let's just try it again and see um, actually you gotta stop doing that and do it like that uh, whoa subtitles let's get this right subtitles subtitles and then this is titles and we could do the same thing here right next Empty. so this is just our initialization we hide all elements when we first run the cutscene so in start scene um wait do we hey we're not even using the function uh, are we using it in our cutscene controller? No, are we using it anywhere? Let's search the whole code base. Nope. Well, that'll uh, be a reason why we're getting flickering, I think. So start cutscene. So we're going to hide all elements. There we go. So that should like reset everything to the crit state. I hope. Oh, My mouth was dry. All right, let's try it. I left the heating on. Okay. Oh, look at that flicker. Oh. That's not good. Okay, let's try again. I woke up. My mouth was dry. I think I left the heating on. That's better. We're gonna get smooth text in. It's nearly time, Joe. That's more like He's it. Waiting. All right, finished title fade out. So we didn't get a subtitle fade out there. Um, but we, ah, have we hooked it up yet? Um, 
let's have a look at our, uh, uh, where's that going to be? It's going to be in the cutscene object. Scene, scene, subtitle animation player. Yeah, has a signal. Um, so there should be a signal down here. Yeah, finished narration fade. We never got that, did we? So on subtitle. Um, uh, So I just used like one word. I've now mixed between narration and subtitles. Um, but I mean, they really are just subtitles. So I'm going to try and stick to the word subtitles and get rid of all my use of narration, apart from in here. But I should be able to change this as well, right? Bring it up to subtitles. Uh, subtitles. Subtitles fade. Okay, so we're not printing anything here. So print finished subtitle fade out. Because what we're going to want to do is hook into that later. All right. Uh, have we fixed all the references to narration? We'll soon Simple find out. out. My mouth was dry. I think I left the heating on. Nearly time, Jove. He's waiting. Okay, so we got two there. We got a finished subtitle fade once it's faded in, and another one when it faded out, which is correct. Um, but not quite, because actually, what we wanted to do is we wanted to yield for the completion of the narration. So we actually need a Need to get a, a link to our um we need an event from our narrator right so is it i think it's narrator that we're using to play that right let's have a look Good scene play narration yep narrator so we're gonna create excuse me we're gonna create a narrator signal finished the rate finished. Connect. Signal. Uh, <clears throat> finished. Playing. Duration. Custom signal here. I think I'm doubling up. I don't think we need to do this because we've got an event already, but I kind of, I'm doing it because I, I think I might want to hook into other things. So just trying to be diligent. So now it's, an, it's a, we're linking to the audio controller, which is the correct way of doing things. So in our game script, we don't care really. Um, cutscene. In our cutscene, we don't care whether this finished or not. Uh, it's useful. We might want to do an event at that point. But um, so this is going to get triggered twice, basically. Once. So I'll just put a little note here triggered twice, start of narration, and end of narration. Whereas the new one we've got, we can say, uh, we can yield to the audio controller. There we are. Cool. Now, let's just make sure that that's worked by doing something else at this point. We're going to do. Um, hey, we can just play the next bit, right? In fact, we can just skew these up now. Um, 
one thing we can't do, remember, is that the dialogue that we got given by Steph had decisions in it, but we're not going to allow for that. So we're going to have uh, Myra one, Jove responds, Jove one, uh, then Myra two. And let's get these from the document. So Jove one, I don't want to see him grumpy teenager. And then Myra, which response do we like the most? I know, but it's nearly a decade until you have this chance again. Oh, okay, yeah, that's the that's the standard response. We got choice next. I'm gonna to have to make a decision on what he's gonna say. <clears throat> okay. Right, so those should queue up. The timing might not be fantastic. We might want to add some little timeouts into the middle there. Um, but next up, I'm going to get that beautiful oh, background oh. audio noise in. My mouth was dry. I think I left the heating on. There we go. Chapter one, goodbye. Cue audio fade in. Steps. Voice one. It's nearly time, Jove. He's waiting. I don't want to see him. I know, but it'll be nearly a decade until you have this chance again. Okay, so clearly we've got a bit of an issue there. The the signal for the narration finished finishes exactly the moment. Um, it doesn't even give the the, the text a chance to fade out. So the way we can hook into that, although it's a bit messy. I think we could just like it. Um, I don't know. Let's have a look. Uh, wrong project. Invalid color code black. Ooh, we'll have to check that. Uh, Yeah, so the, the obvious thing would be to wait for that one that we didn't need. So in the cutscene, if we wait for this to finish subtitles fade, then we know we're waiting for the subtitles to fade, but this becomes a bit messy, doesn't it? Because now we've got to do, got to wait for uh, cutscene to do this. So that, I mean, it's not, it won't be the most paced, but it'll give a little second, waiting for the subtitles to fade out. Oops. Ooh, what have I done? There we go. That should at least give it a little bit of timing to it. I woke up to test. My mouth was dry. It's nearly time, Jove. He's waiting. I don't want to see him. I know, but it'll be nearly a decade until you have this chance again. So that's working. Um, interesting. I don't look at my apostrophes. It might be that that's uh, like a missing character from our character set, the font we're using. I don't even know if I've set a font yet. My mouth was dry. I think I left the heating on. It's nearly time, Jove. He's waiting. I don't want to see him. Yeah. I know, but it'll be nearly a decade until... Well, it doesn't support apostrophes <laughs> for some reason. Uh, okay. That's all right. Apostrophes are... Absolutely required. So, let me 
which is black is an invalid color. Uh, where is that? Fade in title. Capital B is it? No. If it is. I woke up. My mouth was dry. I think I left the heating on. Yep. Same area. Yeah. Hmm. Have to fix that as well. At some point. Oops. Wait, I didn't even know we were using that. We're not using that. Fade in title. Shouldn't modulate your color, because it doesn't actually do anything, right? That's why. There we go. I woke up. My mouth was dry. I wonder why we're getting a flicker with the title here. So we're setting it. And we're going, what am I setting this to? Okay, cool. time, Jove. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah. waiting. Oh. I don't want to see him. I know, but it'll be nearly a decade until you have this chance again. Interesting. So when we skip there, uh, it still manages to play all our... It seems to just blast through everything. Uh, game script. Ah, uh, stop narration isn't working yet, is it? You actually have to get all these functions working. Um, so that's going to be this. Narrator. What do you play? Get narrator. And then stop. Really, we need to fade out if playing. So what you do should fade out. These are small, tiny little things we don't care about so much. I woke up. My mouth was dry. I think I left the heating on. So now when we click to skip, nothing happens. It's nearly time, Jove. He's oh. waiting. I don't want to see him. Oh, how did that even work? It's like it still queues it up. Let's try it again. I woke up. My mouth was dry. Try again. It's continued. It's really time, Jove. He's waiting. I don't want to see him. It's <laughs> time now, but it'll be. No That's interesting. So it seems to continue the cutscene from where we where we started. How the heck did we stop that from happening? We really need to like our start cutscene needs to do even more to make sure that all these elements are cleaned out. Same with end cutscene. Presumably, we need to clear all that out as well. It's all right. That's all fine. Can get all that Walk done. Up. No My mouth was dry. I think I left the heating on. It's a polish at the end, right? Thanks, Jill seventy five. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's nearly time, Jove. He's waiting. I don't want to see him. I know, but it'll be nearly a decade until you have this chance again. Jove with daddy issues. Right, and click to end. Back in. Okay, so uh, let's just set a font for our subtitles because it's looking a bit, a bit crap. 
Um, what should we go for today? Let's have a look at Defont. In fact, actually, let's say best subtitle fonts. Oh yeah. Um, it's nice, clean. I think you just want clean. I don't want anything too crazy. I don't want anything like that. It's all right for Dan. I might. I mean, these are. I think we've already got Helvetica now, right? So why don't we just use that? Um, so custom styles, no custom fonts. I move my head out of the way. There we go. Custom fonts. Click new dynamic font. Click font. Click uh, load. We want to drag the font from assets down here. Bring it over here. Boom. And then set the size of our font 16. Let's try it. See, oh, outline. Ah, oh, what? Superb. Let's set an I didn't This is what I was wondering if we could do. So we can do it automatically. Ooh, we can filter it, so I'll make it all smooth. Go on then. I don't know what all that's going to do, but let's see how it looks. I woke up. My mouth was dry. I think I left the heating on. Come on, make it look good, please. It's nearly time, Jove. He's waiting. Pretty cool. I don't want to see him. I know, but it'll be nearly a decade until you have this chance again. No apostrophes are working now. Yeah, I like that. I might bump it up a touch and make it 18. Uh, I think the outline size is all right. I don't know what the mip maps and filters are doing. Let's hover over. Use mip maps. If true mip map is seen, this improves the font's appearance from downscaling. Uh, Okay, we're not downscaling, so we don't need that. Use filter. Makes the font blur instead of pixelated when we scale it. Actually, you know what? I mean, just when you're adjusting the size of the screen, that might be useful, so. Uh, oh, right, okay. So we're real close here. I'm gonna go back into our cutscene editor and I'm gonna get rid of that apostrophe in our text. Oh, where are we? It's at the bottom. Yeah. Cool. Um, so I want to get the name in there, the, the person's name. So I think all we need to do at the moment, uh, how do we do bold in this? Is it possible? Can we, uh, can we do that? Doesn't support HTML, does it? What about, uh, BB code. Let's just see what happens if we do that. I woke up. Not holding my breath. My mouth was dry. I really doubt okay, it's going to work. Heating on. It's nearly time, Jove. He's waiting. Nope. <laughs> I don't want to see him. Okay, let's just check all the old Godot documentation. Do uh, bold label text. PB code and rich text label. Ah, you need a rich text label. Oh, cool. That is so cool. Well, there we go. It's that easy. Look at all that. This is all the stuff we can do with our text. That's sweet. Let's change that subtitle. So we want to change this to, uh, what was it again? Change type to rich. It's making me think of biscuits. Rich text. So I think we might need to change this again. So do we need to change the font again? Oh my goodness, look at this. We actually need to change quite a lot of information here. Um, but it should all be the same font, right? the font up every time jeez right. what would be good is to be able to load up the hell all the helvetica no bold fonts and 
um, different font types and load them all in. Hey ho! I don't know what, I, uh, if we don't, it's not going to make any difference, right? So, Helvetica new. Download. This looks like a reputable site to download fonts from. Oh, look at all these. Is it going to give us all of those? Yes, it is. Fantastic. So, which ones do we want? Uh... Buy me. That's a lot of fonts. Um, that would be too thin for normal text, right? So we probably want the medium and then the heavy. So I'm going to drag these out here um, the best way I can. Off window. And shrink this down that down and start pulling these out so heavy take that one out uh medium is our normal font uh then back into godot what else do we need we need an italics and a mono what's a, what's a mono font what is a mono font Bold italics as well. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is a the thing. They're not exactly. Yeah, see the light. It's the only one we can use really. So okay. So it's heavy. So we're going to use. Helvetica no light. Then we're using Helvetica light, no light, italic. Uh, which one's that going to be? That one. IT. I think. Yeah, right. Oh, we can just double click. Oh, you can see it. You can see it on the actual icon. That's cool. Right, okay, so that's bold. What is a mono font? What is a mono font? Fixed pitched, fixed width, or non proportional font. Well, I don't know if we have actually any need for a mono font, really. So it's not like there is a Helvetica mono font here. We just use the normal one. So okay. So we've got three fonts. We've got the mono and normal, bold and italics. Yep, and that's it. Okay. Let's fire these into our assets folder. So can we just drag them in this way? Sets, fonts. Let's try this. Oh, nice. Sweet. Like that. Cool. All right. So, mono font is our uh, light font. And so that's going to be 18, so outline size of 2. turned on Boom. next uh, so this is that's the same one let's close that okay bold italics font so that is heavy Ooh, it's even heavier should be using that for our titles to be honest we've got to stick with the bold okay and then again, we want uh, 18 point with 
black outline, two pixels. On and on. Okay. Cool, you get so much control. Uh, so that's a top. Uh, was that italics? Yeah. The next one is same black and a font is wait I thought that was bold edited getting confused so this one should have been italics it again 18 point outline of two on All right good so it's just normal now so font normal would be the the better get no light 18 point 18 point might be a bit big All right but now uh, our BB code there that we insert, it should work. The HTML won't. So we should see the bold well, bit. My mouth was dry. And then the strong bit should fail. Here we go. It's nearly time, Jove. Oh. He's waiting. I don't want to see him. I know, but it'll be nearly a decade until you have this chance again. Right, so it's in totally the wrong place. Have to fix that. Uh, so. Where do we do this again? Let's put some text in there. Test text. Code enabled. Ah, uh, you have to update BB code underscore text. Okay, I'll have to do that. Um, and then we need to somehow work out. How the heck we got it centered before? What? That was super easy with the label, right? Nope, no idea how to do it. Um, Okay, so let's see. Uh, <coughs> anything in here? Do BB code. No. Oh. Uh, we want just rich text label. line but I mean where is that I mean if it's there surely I should see it in here title is right there right under the text Let's Google it. <clears throat> Rich text label center. There we go. <clears throat> oh, for goodness sake. Right. 
you have to put the word center around it. Okay, let's go back in. So let's just remember here, uh, it's bb underscore code, I think. bb code underscore text. All right, so. Here, bb code underscore text, right? And then we're going to put that oops, all right? So we're putting a center tag around our text. Apparently, that should do the job. Uh, Anywhere else we're clearing out text? Yes, here. Oops, there. Okay, it's just text that we're updating. It's okay, that should be it. We should have centered text. Let's get rid of our strong code here. But let's put the bold on the name. So what that means now is we could potentially add the Myra bit above it in bold. Um, I woke up. My oh. mouth was dry. Slight issue. Hide the control. There we go. I woke up. My mouth was dry. I think I left the heating on. <clears throat> it's nearly time, Jove. He's waiting. Yeah. I don't want to see him. I know, but it'll be nearly a decade until you have this chance again. Okay, right. So, half past ten. Getting late, so I want to get... Uh, hey, Graham! Thanks for joining me. How you doing? Thanks for joining the stream. You'll have to come on and give some uh, creative input on a Zoom call. I'd, uh, I'd love to get you on the stream, man some feedback on this um, so we're just uh, going to add some custom noise some custom sound to our cutscene scripting system um, so we want the ability to play some sort of background audio so we've created some stub some stubs here for this so an audio file that gets passed in and whether or not to loop it or not um, so we want to play some audio here. Um, let's have a look at some of our other audio functions. Have we got any? Oh, you know what? We've got an audio controller here. But we don't want to utilize... Uh, oh, wait, actually, do we? No, we created an audio controller for background audio, I think. Let's have a look, see. It's Jupiter we're going to play. And, and script scenes, cutscene, uh, audio controller. Yeah, so we've got cutscene background audio. So that's what we want to hook into. Um, so it's going to be very similar to these, these here. Um, so I think actually these functions should do the job. So we're going to use those in our cutscene script. So play background. It's simply going to fade in the stream player. Let's set volume. And it's going to link to audio controller. Right? The, that's the method uh, owner. Uh, the stream player, we want to set at the top here. So... We're linking to the audio controller, so we know it's going to be audio controller dot get node. Audio controller dot get node. 
yeah, so it's going to be like that, right? So we need to create a link to our audio player. And it is going to be cutscene background audio. So cutscene background audio. My feet are falling asleep. Oh my goodness. I need a capital A on that. Consistent. Right. So that should give us a hook to our uh, to our uh, background audio player, and then we're going to pass that in. Only trouble is we haven't set a sound for it yet. Right. So um, so we've got to set the stream here to be our file. So we're going to open the file up. I'm surprised we haven't done something like this already. Uh, yeah, we've got, see, we're using these transition files. So we've got a very different system set up here, but we're gonna have to do, we're basically gonna have to do the same sort of thing. We need to load these files up uh, and then we need to fade them in. So let's do it. So we're gonna go in. Play background. So first we need to load our file up. Uh, sound to load, fine, that's good. So if it's nothing, quit out. Uh, otherwise, what's our file called? We don't need to do that because we've got a file name. Uh, we don't need to create a new file. Uh, we do need to point to our file. So our audio to load is gonna be this folder here for background audio, right? Go background. So we'll just drag one of these in. We've got a reference. Copy that bit there. And that's our that's our path. Yep. Okay. Uh, if it doesn't exist, then spit out an error. If it can find it, oh, okay. So we are we do need to use that file. Um, we are initializing. So what we're doing here is we're, we're streaming, uh, we're creating a, a reference to the file. So, my bad, so we need, that. it's just that bit we need. So, so we're creating a container, and then we link to that. Yeah, okay. Okay. Now it looks like we're reading the entire file in, which doesn't seem like a great idea because um, I, I'm not sure how the buffer works because the size of this Jupyter 2 file is like a 20 minute long OGG file, which is pretty compact, but it's still a lot to be loading into memory. So I have no idea. And we, at some point we're gonna have to check to see whether this stuff's good uh, memory efficient. But at the moment we don't care we just want to get it working as quickly as possible and then we can optimize as much as we like. So um, transition audio. So we're not doing that anymore. I'm actually setting it up here. So this is going to be dot stream equals stream. Yep. And then background audio player play. Now it's not going to fade in, right? So what we should be doing here is setting our background audio player uh, volume. Uh, now, what is it the stream we need to set the volume for? I can never remember. Let's have a look at an audio player. We've got one here. Yep. So here's an audio player. Yep, it's got volume DB, volume underscore DB. So that's part of the audio player object. So, um, where are we? Cutscene GD. So, volume DB. We're going to set to minus 80, which is as low as it can get. So, we do that before we play. And then, um, bearing in mind we're in cutscene here. Uh, 
we're going to fade in our background audio player to zero, which is zero decibels, which is audible. Here we go. Let's see if we get some more cut. The sound coming out was dry. I think I left the heating on. Now. It's nearly time, Jove. He's waiting. I don't oh. want to see him. It's not working. I know, but it'll be nearly a decade until you have this chance again. My chipmunk voice is so bad. I can't wait to get them replaced. Right, okay, so uh, it may be playing. I think the first thing I need to do is make sure it's actually playing. Oh, wait, of course it's not working. I haven't actually queued it up yet in the game script. All I've got is play background sound here. So uh, it's cutscene dot play background. Background audio, isn't it? Uh, and then we want Jupiter. Jupiter. Jupiter, 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 background, Jupiter. Go for Jupiter 1. All right, play. I will cut. My mouth so that should dry. start okay, fading in the moment the titles fade in. Ooh, it's quite sudden. But it's working. That's more like it. Now we got some atmosphere. It's nearly time, Jove. He's waiting. I don't want to see him. I know, but it'll be nearly a decade until you have this chance again. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. Okay, we're getting there. So now we want to have a little bit of uh, control over how fast we fade that in. So we're going to have... Um, Go for five as our play background. Uh, that's our fade in time, right? So let's go and update our object. So uh, actually, we've got loop equals true. So we're going to have fade in length here and then loop equals true. So we could have an optional third um, setting. Loop is always true. We're not actually setting it here. We probably should. be the stream we'd need to set so we need to do it here as we declare the stream uh, but you know what it doesn't really matter no one's going to watch this this particular cutscene for 20 minutes sit there listen to that background audio graham if you're listening that is the sound from nasa apparently they pointed a something at jupiter uh, got a load of static and then made the static sound pretty through a synthesizer it's actually remarkably nice um, but all these things are a bit gimmicky, I think. I mean, I could put the sounds of Jupiter through a, you know, a Korg keyboard. I'm sure it'd sound fucking awful. Um, let's have a look. So fade in. So we've got, we're passing in zero here. Not sure what that is. I think that must be the length. Let's have a look. Audio controller. Fade in function the volume so okay so length so if we start doing this now um we have to do start doing it everywhere so this is actually going to replace audio transition fade in duration so Length equals, yeah, that would be the default. So now we don't have to declare it. Um, and then we can put the length there. Hopefully that doesn't break our fade in function. Let's go back to our cutscene. So this is our volume. So we're fading, fading into zero decibels, but we're going to bring in a fading length of 10 seconds. Here we go. I woke up. My mouth was dry. I think I left the heating on. Nice. 
Nice. It's nearly time, Jove. He's waiting. I don't want to see him. I know, but it'll be nearly a decade until you have this chance again. Looking quite cinematic. I can't wait to get some shaders uh, on those images. The images are a bit static at the moment. All right, so we've got most of the elements we need. Let's get some witty comeback from Jove here. Um, so it'll be nearly a decade until you have this chance again. What's Jove going to say? Press one for Jove to say this. Press two for Jove to say that. Um, here are our options. We can either have him say, that's his choice. Remember, Jove has daddy issues. Uh, so he's like, I blame daddy. Or we can have him say, can't you ask him to stay? I think we're going to go for angry, angry Jove. That's his choice, which is cutscene one, Jove 2A. So keep that in. Uh, okay, Angry Jove. Jove. And I'm just going to move this onto my other monitor so I can just move this text across. There we go. So to which Myra replies. You know that's not true. He's doing it for all of us, god damn it. Uh, which is Myra 3A. Uh, to which she follows up finally with. Anyway, there's not much time. I don't think it should be your dad, because we've just been talking about your dad. So it should be. He wants to see you, not your dad wants to see you. Anyway, uh, so that is cutscene one, Myra Ford, OGG. All right, let's see if that works. We should have a full script now. I woke up. My mouth was dry. I think I left the heating on. Boom. It's nearly time, Jove. He's waiting. I don't want to see him. I know, but it'll be nearly a decade until you have this chance again. That's his choice. You know that's not true. He's doing it for us, for all of us. Anyway, there's not much time. Your dad wants to see you. Yeah, it should be he wants to see you, I think. Um, there's always, always time for changing the script. Thank God it's not my voice. I'm going to put a little note in here for Steph. Uh, uh, maybe change to he wants to see you rather than Bit weird referencing your dad and above we are referencing him as he and him. Right? Um what we probably need to do is maybe change this to your dad. Um, that would make more sense, right? So, happy days. So now, if this cutscene finishes, now I, I think what we need is a little bit more dramatic pause, right, in between some of these. So it's nearly time, Jove. He's waiting. I don't want to see him. Okay, and then pause. She has a little think to herself for a second. Then, I know, it'll need, be nearly a decade until you get there time again. Now, does he need to think? Or does he just immediately lash out again? It's his choice. Yeah, and you know what? He'll, he'll immediately lash out again. And she'll have a longer think here and be like, you know what? 
you an idiot. Right. I mean, no. <laughs> She's very understanding. Uh, we'll have a little pause here. We'll have a two second pause there. One, one second pause. It's quite a long pause. Right. And then we want to end the cutscene. So we can actually comment this in there. I should just end. We'll have a little pause. And actually, what we want to do is fade everything out. <clears throat> Uh, we haven't got fade out for audio yet, but let's try that. I woke up. My mouth was dry. I think I had left the heating on. Woomph. Here we go. It's nearly time, Jove. He's waiting. I don't want to see him. I know, but it'll be nearly a decade until you have this chance again. That's his choice. You know that's not true. He's doing it for us. It's way too us. long. <laughs> anyway, there's not much time. Your dad wants to see you. And then, wait out. Oh, we crashed. Uh, end cutscene. Doesn't exist. Uh, what is it? Oh, it's, we removed the underscore. Okay, super. So we definitely don't want to have a three second timeout there. And maybe this timer could be a little shorter. Right, last playthrough, I, I promise. My mouth was dry. Here we go. I think I left the heating on. It's nearly time, Jove. He's waiting. I don't want to see him. I know, but it'll be nearly a decade until you have this chance again. That's his choice. You know that's not true. He's doing it for us, for all of us. Anyway, there's not much time. Your dad wants to see you. Slick. So now we need to be able to fade this, um, fade this out. And our scripting for cutscenes it's getting very close to being flexible and useful. We can actually start using it. We can make multiple cutscenes now. Um, I was just thinking, actually, what we should do is with the we should be able to upload video um, and play that. Um, so we could have certain scenes that are video and faded in. So rather than just having an image, we could get some stock imagery of a storm. Um, throw that in there. So. Anyway, so I need to fade out um, let's have a look. So okay, so our let's, let's my mic got my cable ripped around it. There we go. So I need to be able to pass in an audio length here as well. Now I can do I can use a fade out here. So go back to our cutscene controller. So it's going to be a, a little bit like this. We get hook to our um, little background player. Here we go. So this is play background audio and stop background audio. It's going to have a. Uh, uh, Fade out length. Right. So uh, it's going to be very similar to uh, this. We get a hook to the current cutscene background audio. And then we pass it in to the audio fade out controller. And we'll fade it out over four seconds. 
Let's kick it. Let's see what happens. My mouth so wait for it to fade in. I think I left it. And then we'll there. just end the cutscene and it should fade out. Oh no, it won't fade out unless we put it in the end cutscene. Uh, we should put this code in the end cutscene. It's nearly time, Joe. He's waiting. I don't want to see him. I think the text needs to come down a bit. I know, Our subtitle should be at the bottom quarter. Again. It's quite high up. That's his choice. Um, it's actually supposed you to be, but the vertical alignment's true. missing. He's doing it for us, for all of us. Anyway, there's not much time. Your dad wants to see. So now it should fade out over four seconds. Nope. It ain't working. That's because I used the word fade in rather than fade out. Let's just double check our fade out command. Yep. Okay, well, that'll be the problem. Uh, we'll set it two seconds and then stop background. I don't think we even put it in this. Nope, we didn't. Uh, but that's fine because we don't want to put it in here. We're going to make it part of uh, so we're actually we're going to do a little check to see if it's playing before we try and stop it and fade it out because it could be a bit messy if we do that. So if background player is is playing, hmm. doesn't seem to want to check that, but okay. Super right. Um. So, stop or fade out background audio. Okay. Background is really bad, actually. I'm going to change it to audio because it's you're confusing it. I don't want to confuse it with imagery. So... using it where are we using it oh up here play background audio super so in our cutscene script then we need to stop background audio and we want to put it in end cutscene so it'll always finish um fade it out over yeah what did we say three seconds Cool. Did we use it anywhere else? Did we use it anywhere else without the text? Did we use it in here? Nope. Okay, I think we're good. So if I hit play here, Double wait cut. for it to fade in. My mouth was dry. I think I left the heating on. And then click to skip. It's nearly time, Jove. He's waiting. Where? I don't want to see him. Hmm. I know, but it'll be nearly a day. It's not working, is it? Well, minor bugs. Um, just tiny little bugs. The other thing we need to know is, like, what's the volume? When we fade out, what's the current volume? It might not be zero, right? So we should actually get get current volume of stream. So let's say uh, our current volume equals, because if it's fading in, right, then when you stop, you skip and the volume's at like minus 60 decibels and it's going to spike before it fades back down. So we want to fade down from an appropriate volume. Uh, okay, so I'm going to skip. Obviously, we've got issues with the skipping at the moment. I think I left the heating on. I need to look at the those. It's nearly time, Jove. He's waiting. OK. 
it. All we care about here is the I know, but audio I fading out. And he had this chance again. But his choice. You know that's not true. He's doing it for us, for all of us. Drama. Anyway, there's not much time. Your dad wants to see. Uh, definitely faded out extremely quickly. So I'm thinking that maybe length is not in seconds. Uh, let's have a look at fading duration. It's a float for starters. It didn't cut, but it was like, it felt like a second. Oh, I've set it to two seconds. Let's go for five. Oh, I don't want to play it all over again. A bug oh, cut. My mouth was dry. Should be a good test if I just skip it again. again. I know there's a bug with this. So it's coming in. It's nearly time, Jove. He's waiting. I don't want to see him. Okay, I think uh, for now. We'll leave it at that. Um, let's update our bug list. We've got a few bugs here that we need to fix. So, uh, cutscene bugs. What have we done? So we've got the ability to play background atmospherics. Yes. Ability to play sound effects. Yes. Uh, and the ability to show text and audio. Yes. Decent font with stroke, yes. Not just narration text, but full header text for credits or intro. Yes. Uh, so we want to have some shake and some shade eruptions so we can mess with the screen a bit. Fade out audio, fade in cutscene audio. Yeah, we've done that. So a new screen for the cutscene. We've created that. So actually, we've pretty much done everything we listed apart from our... our uh, music and other little bits and bobs. Uh, bugs. Uh, need to reset everything on exit transition. Exit cutscene. Two plays again. Uh, need to stop all players on exit cutscene. Let's call it skip. Uh, sometimes voices carry on. Uh, what else? Uh, what was the one we just mentioned? Um, oh yeah, uh, background audio. Not fading out correctly. Otherwise, looking pretty good. Uh, oh, before we call it. Uh, can we vertically align, so it's a Godot, rich text label, vertical align. How to vertically align, here we go. Uh, Okay, yeah, so that doesn't work. Just, be, just delete your answer. But it's good to know. Right, so this guy is basically saying that um, based on the number of lines, we've got to offset a margin up the way. I don't think we need to do that. I think we're just going to put a margin in. Um, I don't think we need any sort of vertical alignment here. Uh, so let's just go into our cutscene object. Show it. 2D, there's our text, not labeled. Uh, we'll put, so because it's BB text, we can put some, uh, let's go for that, and put center, BB code, 
Hallelujah. Here is a very long sentence. It's not very long, to be honest. But, uh, okay, so we want to push that down the way. So we'll put a margin. Uh, now, let's just double check what this guy's done, because playing with the margins can be a little bit messy. So we're getting a reference to label, getting a reference to the original position of the label. And then we are going to label label rect size y and adjusting a, a set margin margin top. Okay, so that's margin margin top. So we're just going like that basically. Yeah, so it's pushing it down. So yeah, so obviously the trouble is with this approach is that if there's a lot of text, it's not going to show up. So we want to allow for at least two lines. Uh, so we'll just add a bit more text in here on a second line. And just adjust this. So you know what? We've got um, one, two, three, four, five containers. We could actually add a sixth container just to give ourselves a bit more. Actually, we'd need to add two more, right? So we need to add a sixth container and a seventh container. Um, so we need to move click to skip down at the bottom right. Titles would move, so subtitles would move here. And then titles would move here. Yeah. Okay. So I think that should give us a bit more to play around with, which means now we need to update our script slightly and just reference our containers. So titles is four, subtitles is six. So cutscene container. So titles is four. Subtitles is six. Uh, again, we don't need that anymore, right? So titles and titles. Cool. Right. Now we've inadvertently improved how that works now. So click to stop. I don't think we ever, never reference it anyway. Click to skip. I mean, it's not great. What did we want to do? We wanted to um, we wanted to push that margin. We wanted to increase the margin. No, yeah. We decrease the margin bottom to bring it up and decrease the margin right. But this, for some reason, I think it's because of us our, our, um, our expand options. It always. It doesn't care. It doesn't store the margin. As soon as we hit play here, it's going to oh, lose God. that saying, I think. My mouth was dry. I think I left the heat. Yeah, I think it's right there at the bottom. But that's the positioning's better. So we've got enough space for another line here. So we're going to have the character title up here. Whoops. So character title is bold. So uh, center. Then uh, bold Myra close bold close center. Yeah. So that's kind of how we want our subtitles to look. Um, so we're going to have to have that and then forward slash n and then the sentences that follow. So let's just tweak our script slightly. So it's our cutscene generator. It's our narration text. So we're putting our BB code in. So we need to um, we need to add the character name to the subtitle. So that's going to be subtitles dot BB text equals that. 
And then Myra, it's going to be plus plus. Uh, and oh, wait, name's not good. That's a reserved name, right? Uh, character name. Cool, right? And then we, I think, I don't know, I think it's like forward slash n. But, oh no, you know what? I always do that. It's always the one I don't use. I always get it wrong. Graham, I bet you never get that wrong. Um, is it forward slash n for a line feed me? Is that right? Um, I don't know why I'm used to splitting between a single. I don't like that. I want to stick with the same one every time. Right, and then we're going plus equals. I'm adding it onto the bottom. So let's try that. I woke up. My mouth was dry. Woke up. Got out of bed. My mouth was dry. In seconds. I woke up. Right here we go. My mouth was dry. I think I left the heating on. Nearly time, Joe. Ah! It's backslash in. I don't want to see him. Wait. I know, but it seems to be working. Until you have this chance again. That's weird. Seems to be putting in a character feed anyway. Uh, I'll just try backslash in. I woke up. Backslash. <laughs> Thanks, man. I had I was right the first time. I always get it wrong, so then I pick the opposite to what I last picked. And I think I just do that throughout my entire life. I've just been switching. <sighs> Backslash for God's sake. I mean, it's the same as HTML then, right? It's nearly time, Jove. Yay! I don't want to see him. There we go. I know, but it'll be nearly a decade until you have this chance again. That's his choice. You know that's not true. He's doing it for us, for all of us. Anyway, there's not much time. Your dad wants to see you. Right, and we're in. And let's turn on the TV. Hello, America. I'm Bob I don't want to see my dad. Life, liberty, and Levin. Welcome. 50 50 chance Steve, of getting right. Yeah, fair. <laughs> that is true. Doctor. All right. Uh, you might have noticed now that we've got locational based uh, audio. So when I turn on the TV, eh, there's nothing good on. Uh, with the audio, the sound effects, like if I'm flipping through the magazine here. When I was a kid, I wanted to visit Earth. Oh, but God. after the death of my father. Anyway, so each location has now got a room size associated with it. So I can dynamically change the sort of reverb effect uh, depending on where you are. So <sighs> I think that is uh, quite a slug. That's uh, two hours and 15 minutes of development today. My legs are killing me. My ass is killing me. Everything is killing me. But I'm pretty satisfied that we've managed to make a, uh, a pretty cool, uh, so completed cutscene scripting system. Uh, what did we add? We added uh, background audio control. We added uh, subtitle and audio control and we tweaked various settings Why have I got location there so let's change there uh, oh room size yeah I don't know whether we want to keep that in yet I think I uh, yeah because we haven't mastered it yet I really want to tweak that before I commit it um, but you know what my computer could fry and they'll be like what did I do again so I'll keep it in uh, added preliminary, uh, you know, I'm going to do that as a second commit. So cutscene stuff, boom, push that. Ooh, it's pretty big. There's my coding scene. Give a better. There we go. That's better. It's quite big. I don't know what the file is. 
It's so huge, but there's a, a lot of uploading going on there. Uh, 